Max Blumenthal is here with us, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce him. Uh, he, he's an award-winning journalist as well as the editor-in-chief and founder of the independent investigative news white website, The Gray Zone. He's here right now, Max Blumenthal. Hi, Max. Hey, Jimmy. How you doing? Good. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. Ray McGovern will be on later, former CIA guy. He's going to be on to talk all things foreign policy. Uh, but right now, Max Blumenthal, last night you went to an event. Could you tell people what the event was? Well, it was a debate at the National Press Club sponsored by the Michael V. Hayden Center of the former CIA and NSA director, Michael Hayden, on whether Julian Assange should be persecuted and extradited to the U.S. Um, <clears throat> I actually don't have the full card in front of me, but you know the two most significant figures debating were Barry Pollack, who's one of Assange's lawyers, and did a really good job of um, pushing back on a lot of the garbage that was being spewed at him, including from the moderator, who is from an outlet called Newsy, which is just like, yeah. it's Newsy, it's, it's not news. And then um, on the anti-Assange side, Mark Zaid, who is longtime uh, legal counsel representing CIA operatives, including whistleblowers, but he's basically a big time national security lawyer in DC who plays a very malignant role in the world of national security. I'll talk about him in a second. And he was teamed up with some guy named Holden Triplett or something. And he was a former FBI agent, one of the anti-Trump FBI characters. And, um, you know, it proceeded as you would expect with a lot well, of propaganda and deception about Assange. Well, let's get to the your part in it. So this yeah. guy here, his name is Siggy Thordeson, or however you pronounce his name. Yeah. So this guy is, uh, he's admitted he lied about Julian Assange, that Julian Assange told him to go hack stuff, and he didn't. He admitted that that was a lie. And he's also, uh, you know, his own psychiatrist calls him a sociopath, and he's also, is he is he a pedophile? Yes, and yes, this, and he's in jail now in Iceland because he would not stop trying to molest children and carry out acts of um, computer crime. So that guy right there. So then they and they used his testimony to uh, uh, prosecute Julian Assange. Now, this guy you're talking about, Mark S. Zaid. So he was on this panel. So this guy said this. I've gotten clearances for guys who've had child porn issues. So he's saying he's gotten security clearances for guys who have child porn. He's done it. So people he <laughs> he's known who have child porn issues uh issues he's gotten them clearances this guy so max yep. asked this guy a question at this anti julian assange bullshit thing um and here we go i i think we'll go take the next question and i believe there is a gentleman here Hi. for a question i am a, i am a gentleman here thank you <laughs> uh max blumenthal the gray zone from here in washington dc um the U.S. government used as one of its key witnesses against Julian Assange an Icelandic criminal named Siggy Thordarson, who was a known and confessed pedophile who attempted to pay children for sex, uh, was considered a sociopath by psychologists during a review, and confessed to lying about Julian Assange, specifically directing him to hack the uh, personal devices of Icelandic reporters contributing to the indictment. He lied. He admitted to lying, um, this pedophile. Um, Mark Zaid, uh, on February 10th, 2018, you tweeted that you have gotten security clearances for guys with uh, child porn problems. Huh. So I guess I'll give this question to you. Do you think the U.S. government's recruitment of a pe pedophile and confessed liar harms the credibility of the case against Julian Assange? And what do you think about the tactic of uh, the U.S. government's tactic of recruiting pedophiles as witnesses against Julian Assange. Uh, so one of the things that I do, <laughs> not a loaded question. no, not at all. One of the one of my question. main practice areas is is handling security clearance cases. And there are a lot of allegations, unfortunately, involving child pornography, the vast majority of which never turn out to be child pornography. They turn out to be just adult pornography that a polygraph examination has led for someone to uh, speculate about. 
I don't make any decisions. But about, just to be clear, in the tweet, you said yes, that those I, guys I, have I'm problems well aware with child porn. Like you. you made a conclusion uh, that they had those problems, not nice. a judge. That was your conclusion. Yes, yeah, nice. and, and I'm telling you, I don't make any decisions about security clearances. The U.S. government makes a decision about security mm. clearances. But so you decided to any, help pedophiles. Anyone who ha I have represented <laughs> who has had an issue, whether it's Child pornography, adult pornography, criminal history, alcoholism, foreign national context. I make my case as a lawyer, just as Barry does in his. So this guy is Mark Zaid. This guy pretends to represent whistleblowers. What he does is turns, you know, he's he's working for the establishment. And uh, if, if I was a whistleblower, that'd be the last guy I go to. But he will take the testimony of, of known pedophiles and sociopaths to try to indict a journalist but but um so he's trying to pretend that he didn't tweet what he tweeted right like he's trying to downplay so at the first his first go-to was yeah these guys it's all bs it's regular por pornography it's not and then you're like no you concluded that this right. guy had these issues right. and that you got him a clear that was your words and so yeah. then he just starts talking. And so here he is. Said, I'll, I'll play the rest of his answer. He didn't answer. say alleged. He didn't say accused of child right. issues. That's right. Here we go. Case for his clients. Uh, and then the authorities make the decision. In that case, the U.S. government. The reality is in a lot of criminal cases, a lot of the witnesses are not the best and nicest people. I don't know anything particular, uh, personal about this individual. I have no doubt that if Assange is brought here, Barry will do his best uh, capably and competently to attack the credibility of this particular witness. Uh, and at the end of the day, the facts will determine and the jury system will determine whether or not uh, Barry or others can successfully undermine this individual's credibility uh, or, the indiv or the jury will decide that notwithstanding the past of any particular witness, that the facts lead to the criminal culpability of Assange. <laughs> that was his big answer. That was his big answer. Hey, why are you guys, why are you uh, getting security clearances for pedophiles? And doesn't this call into question what the hell the government's doing using known sociopathic pedophiles? So um, what did you make of his answer, Max? Well, or, he didn't really give an answer. Or lack thereof, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he totally deflected it. And, and it's just so revealing that one of the key people in Washington making the case against Julian Assange does not know that one of the U.S. government's key witnesses who was used to make this, to compose the superseding indictment against Julian Assange under the Espionage Act has perjured himself, has admitted that everything he said that the U.S. government used may, was made up and is in jail now because he's a criminal and he was basically trying to get off of these um, child, you know, pedophilia raps that he had. So the U S government was colluding with a liar to destroy Assange. And he didn't, he never, he never heard of this. This is a major story. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you can see what he's doing, which is really insidious. What Mark Zaid is doing is saying, well, when Julian Assange comes, he's going to get a really good defense lawyer, yeah. which is why they kind of brought his lawyer up to show how able he was. And he's going to have a fair trial and the jury will make a decision and everything will be because he is trying to whitewash a system that is designed to doom Julian Assange to life in a U.S. federal prison. We're talking about the Eastern District Court in Northern Virginia that has a 99.97 conviction rate on national security cases. Julian Assange has no chance. And he is supposed to have a free, a fair trial under the auspices of a government that plotted to assassinate him. No. And so Mark Zaid's whole argument was that the system works, the system yes. will work, and that Julian Assange is guilty, but he doesn't know that one of the major witnesses admitted to lying. So he doesn't even that's the thing you realize about these guys. They don't know shit. Like the, his, his debate partner, Holden Triplett, said, it clearly, clearly Julian Assange was colluding with Russian GRU, military intelligence. But the U.S. government hasn't even made that case. No. The, well, because uh, the, 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 the Mueller report stated explicitly that there was no collusion between Trump or his, his campaign and Russia.
Right. Or, or Julian Assange and the Espionage Act, the superseding indictment doesn't even mention Russia. So I went up after the event to this former FBI agent to ask where he got, got his evidence from. And he just it was the most pathetic act of deflection where he just started saying, look, we just have to admit that we we couldn't even have this conversation in Russia. Oh, and that so that's, kind that's, of bullshit. Oh, yeah, my God. That's why it's important that we're here. Um, and you could hear the crowd kind of snickering at me and laughing, you know, that, you know, and someone said, oh, that's a loaded question. Like what was incorrect or unfair about the question? Um, it should, you know, it was loaded with facts about how shitty they yeah. are. Yeah. And and how um, unfair and uh, loaded and how, how the case, the whole case against Assange yeah. is just yeah. falling apart. So uh, the. There's another clip that I think is really interesting, and it speaks to what Mark Zaid does for his work in Washington right now, which is also incredibly here. I'll, I'll play that. Yeah, this this is that. So you, he's gonna he's gonna be talking about. So one of the things Julian Assange revealed was that not only were they killing people, you know, Ill illegally slaughtering people in a, in Iraq, but then when the Red Cross or whatever people would come to try to help those people that they just slaughtered, they would then slaughter those people. It's called a double yeah. tap. Yeah. And I always thought that was a war crime. I, I, uh, but he's going to defend that here. So here it is. Thought there was you had rescuers of enemy, and you can under the laws of war kill the rescuers of the enemy because they're looked at as being the enemy. So, so he just said, you can kill the rescuers of the enemy because they're considered the enemy. I didn't think, th I, I always thought that when the Red Cross or an ambulance came, that you couldn't kill them, at, or that's a war crime. Do you know anything about that? I wonder how all the, the hysterical White Helmet supporters feel about that statement, because, you know, it goes both ways. So you could. But he so, said, because they're seen if they're seen as the enemy. It doesn't matter if they are. It's how they're seen yes. by the guys in the helicopter gunship or the drone pilot. So they determine what a crime is. So is it, do you want me to play more of that, or is that? I mean, I can just care like contextualize it. Here, I'll play. And it's it. one of those. It was okay. one of those situations where um, I just started recording in the middle of a statement because it was so outrageous. Yeah. But yeah. The entire statement is a justification or, or it's him complaining that Julian Assange released the so-called digital murder video that had been provided to him by Chelsea Manning. Everybody watching this has probably seen that notorious video. We've all seen Roger it. Wa yeah. Roger Waters features it in his concerts. It shows you what the Iraq war was like, where just a helicopter gunship pulls up and slaughters a bunch of civilians, uh, including Reuters cameramen, cameramen who are stringers for Reuters. Because uh, they thought that their um, tripods were guns, I guess. I don't know. They just gunned them all down, and then rescuers pulled up, and then they killed the rescuers. And you can in the in this cold, calculating way where they're kind of just laughing, and they're almost laughing about it. And that happened again and again and again across Iraq under U.S. occupation. And Mark Zaid was upset that Julian Assange didn't take this video and immediately go to the U.S. government to file a formal complaint because he believes in the system so much, the system that validated the war in Iraq, the invasion of Iraq, the death of a million Iraqis, that he thinks that we're supposed to believe that Julian Assange, who is not even a US citizen, would have not just been arrested right then and there and complete and, and, and disappeared. I, would, I mean, that's why he's in jail now is because Right. System. He's embarrassing what what system. do you think they would have did to him? They're, they're what they're doing to him now. They would have did to him then. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Mark Zaid runs this organization called Whistleblower Aid, which yeah. ex is explicitly anti WikiLeaks, and they have driven around D.C. with these uh, truck like banner trucks, uh, advertising their services for government whistleblowers, anyone who works in a federal agency, and they say, "Don't go to the press." Don't go and embarrass the government. Come to us and we will go through proper channels. Whoa. And what it and, and who did he co-found it with? Every single co-founder is a spook, a former member of the US intelligence apparatus. People like Libby Liu, who helped run a color revolution operations in inside China and Hong Kong, well, which is China. I mean, so what are they what are they doing? It seems like 
you know, the most sinister view would be, or the, the most cynical view would be that they're trying to entice whistleblowers into coming forward so they can turn them into the government. And that's actually something that Mark Zaid is accused of doing to his former client, CIA whistleblower Jeffrey Sterling, who you know, and many of your pe- many people watching this would know, he was a CIA whistleblower, blew the whistle on an illegal operations in Iran, and he was jailed. He spent like eight years in jail for trying to expose corruption and wrongdoing. And why was he jailed? Well, according to an FBI agent who testified in his trial, Mark Zaid, who was his lawyer, turned him in. Yes. He went to Mark Zaid and said, there's this wrongdoing, there's this corruption. Will you represent me? And Mark Zaid went to the CIA. So you have a snitch who also boasts about getting security clearances for people involved in pedophilia, who is surrounded by spooks. And he is the front and center making the case against Julian Assange. Who's the real criminal here? Right. Right. And and who's telling the truth and who's lying? Has Julian Assange ever lied? I mean, have Wiki have he's never had to republish anything? Never never had to retract anything ever. But these are the liars. So I I went out there to um, to challenge them, and I was second on the mic. The first guy was hostile to Assange and was like, he got the. We are all of our people in Afghanistan killed by the Taliban. Then uh, Joe Loria and Chip Gibbons, who were supporters of Assange, got to uh, ask tough questions from the other side. And then they just ended the event and had a reception. So it wasn't much of a challenge. I mean, it, we, we, the, the people didn't really get to speak. Well, I appreciate you showing up and doing that. That's uh, Well, you know what? There's one more thing I want to show you. Yeah. So this is from that guy, the pedophile liar sociopath who they <laughs> So he, so this guy this guy pedophile enabler, pedophile enabler. So this guy here gave oh, an inter- yeah. he gave an interview and they asked him about was it true what the FBI said that uh, Assange asked you. So the thing is Assange can publish anything that he gets even if it was gotten illegally, if somebody broke into someone's house and stole some documents and gave it to a journalist, he could use them. The journalist can, if he didn't participate in the crime of getting those documents, which Julian Assange didn't. So they keep trying that. The reason why they tortured Chelsea Manning was to try to get Chelsea Manning to say that Julian Assange ordered him or helped him somehow in hacking those and getting those materials that he got those classified materials. That's why they tortured Chelsea Manning to get her to do that. And to her credit, she didn't. She didn't crack. So tip of the hat. Uh, so now they're asking it. Did, did, so then they were saying that Julian Assange helped this pedophile guy, uh, hack something and, or told right. him to. Right. And so they asked him, a reporter asked him, said, Hey, did you tell the FBI that, that Julian Assange told you to go hack something? And he says back that I hack them. No, I didn't tell the FBI that that's what he's saying. No, I didn't say that to the FBI. And then the reporter says back, and that Assange asked you to hack them? No, I didn't say that to the FBI. Well, then why does the indictment claim you said that? He says, I can't answer that. They say, is it because you don't want to answer it? Or is it because of the FBI you can't answer? He says, I can't answer that. Great question. They say, why can't you answer? He says, because I'm not allowed to. So the FBI told him, you can't, if you say anything else that screws us, we're going to screw you harder, right? Just like Chuck Schumer said, they got six ways of Sunday to screw with you. And well, so, especially if you're a pedo, especially if you're a pedo. So they got him and uh, they just, they probably told him to lie or they made up that he said something knowing that if he contradicts them, they have the pedophile charges to throw at him, right? So they're going to lie in their indictment, which they did. And now they're going to say that he lied to them. He says he never told them that. Isn't that interesting? What do you make it's, of that? It's, it, it's, well, it's damning. It's, it's completely damning. And he also lied about his, uh, the level of, uh, the, the level of his relationship with Julian Assange. He claimed to be a close confidant and inside the inner circle of WikiLeaks. He turned out to be an intern who 
Assange barely knew. Um, and so he later confessed this. So yeah, they're sort of cobbling together a bunch of lies to make a case against Julian Assange. And he's being destroyed in basically in solitary confinement. I mean, this is happening right out in the open as everybody screamed about Trump being the enemy of the press and he's a dictator and he's a fascist. And there they all, it's just happening right out in front. And nobody, there is no, this isn't the front page news of the Washington, Washington Post or the front page news of the New York Times every day like it should be. If it was Trump and it was Jim Acosta, it would be the lead story at every news show. Well, it's, first of all, I mean, the National Press Club hosting an event where people are I- I- encouraged to denounce and call for the jailing of a persecuted publisher. Like it's a debate. Like it's a f- debate and there are two, two sides to it. Um, Mark Zaid was actually saying, there is no slippery slope. This will not affect other journalists. No one else is going to get jailed. Don't worry about it. This is a one-off. That, I mean, that would not be allowed for another journalist or someone who was considered on the side of the U.S. I mean, when you walk into the National Press Club, they have a big sign up for Austin Tice, who is probably dead and said to be in Syrian captivity, um, but was with McClatchy. And, you know, he's someone that the U.S. wants to get out. But there's no sign for Julian Assange there. The White House Press Correspondents Association at their their dinner, the nerd prom, they all wear buttons for Austin Tice. No one's wearing a button for Julian Assange. When Randy Credico tried to... uh, make a protest for arrested Julian Assange him. at that dinner. They arrested him. They beat him badly and dragged him out. Um, it, it was ugly. And the New York Times publisher, Arthur Sulzberger, recently issued a call for Assange's, uh, for the government to drop just the Espionage Act charge against Julian Assange. He was the only publisher of a major U.S. newspaper to issue that call, along with papers from Europe, like The Guardian, for example, which has spent years demonizing Julian Assange. Wow. Well, they finally called for the government to drop part of their case after you destroyed Julian Assange's reputation, published a completely bogus story about him meeting with Paul Manafort at the Ecuadorian embassy, which you refused to take off your website. Now you come forward and where's the Wall Street Journal? Where's the Associated Press? Where's the LA Times? Where's the Chicago Tribune? None of them are saying anything. So this is the this is the mainstream press. This is how they throw you under the bus after they use you, use your stories, use the information that you dredge up about corruption, about crimes. Then they sell you out. Wow. Well, Max, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for pushing back against that bullshit at the press club, the press club. That's what, what, what I'm. You know, what, I, what I've started telling people is that what, the problem is Americans don't realize how corrupt our society is and our government. They think our government is just regular corrupt. It's not. It's 100 percent corrupt. This is a banana republic. It does not work. And the only way the government can work now is if it's moving in the direction of corruption. If there isn't the, gr- the grease of corruption, nothing gets done. That's why we can send 100 billion dollars to the most corrupt country in Europe. Why, at the say 100 billion, which is enough to fix homelessness four, f- four times over in the United States, except we won't send it to the United States to fix homelessness. Why don't we send 100 billion dollars? to the United States because that's what we need. You know how many great things we could do with $100 billion? First of all, we could give sick days to the railroad workers who everybody says is the glue that holds our, our total economy together. We could give them actual sick days. It only costs $275 million a year to do that. That's $100 billion we're sending to Ukraine. So there's a million things we could do here with that money, but there's no corruption behind. No, there's no corruption to help homeless people. It goes the other way. Corruption goes the other way. Hey, it's to help help the railroad tycoons, not the railroad workers. So no matter what it is, send money to Ukraine, squash a strike here by the worker. No matter that we're 100 percent corrupt, not little corrupt, not regular corrupt. Our government is 100 percent corrupt, which is why you still don't have health care. And they're sending the two trillion dollars. The the Pentagon said again, they can't. Another two trillion dollars. They have no idea where it is. So anything you'd like to say, Max, to end the segment? Well, if homeless people and railroad workers would just get something like 200 think tanks on K Street, Mm -hmm. a bunch of lobbyists and control all three major cable news organizations, then, you know, maybe they would start to get some concessions. So they just need to work harder and be um, risk takers like the people who are benefiting from the Ukraine proxy war. 
who are building McMansions in the northern Virginia suburbs right as we speak. The risk takers. The yeah. risk takers. Yeah. Yeah, the they're, innovators. They're job creators. You know, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, they're job, job creators. creators. The innovators. All right, Max, everybody check, it, check it out his work at the Gray Zone. Thanks for coming on, pal. Hey, I have a quick question. Max, are you doing an event this Saturday? Is it? Uh, oh, Can yes. you go ahead and share that? It's a free Assange rally this Saturday, December 10th in New York City at 1 p.m. at the British Consulate. You want to just chat really quickly, let everybody know? Yeah. Well, aside from me, there'll be some lesser names there, like Roger Waters. Um, Garland Nixon will be there. Um for who's who? Uh, Margaret Kunstler, Randy Credico, so many people who have been fighting for Assange for years are going to be there, and everyone needs to come out and show up at the British Consulate at 1 p.m. this Saturday in New York and Washington, D.C., on Massachusetts Ave at the British Embassy. There will be a protest as well. Um, so be there. If you're, if you're anywhere you know, within driving distance, show up. Okay. Okay. Thanks for getting that out. Hey, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, December 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And we're going to be in Tempe, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you there.